Well, hello. Welcome back to Lonnie's Garage. I'm Lonnie. Now let's get to what we're doing today. Hi, welcome back. Today's video is going to be uh, another, I guess you would say, tutorial video, a how to video. Um, uh, it's concerning my LS swap on my 84 Chevy C10. Uh, I thank every one of you that's been following the build. Uh, you, uh, you've helped me out a lot. Uh, most of you all watch them and you also talk to me over on Facebook. Um, there is a group uh, I do want to give a really, really big shout out to. Um, the group is called LS Swapped Square Bodies. Um, I believe it's 73 through 87 uh, GM. Uh, a lot of great, great knowledge on there. A lot of uh, um, files on there. There's a file section. Um, and if, if it's not in the file section, there's plenty of people on there that are willing to help you out. Uh, they've helped me out tremendous. Um, I, my hat's off to them. Um, in fact, today's uh, video, which will be covering a, it's a 90s model suburban uh, cluster that I have. Uh, it, it doesn't have a tack. Uh, most of you all know, you've seen my other videos, but uh, I have straight away from the, the uh, I believe it's Intellitronics digital gauges. Uh, I did love how they looked, but I just didn't like how they worked. Uh, my experience with them, they were really, really bad. I wouldn't recommend them. Anyhow, uh, the cluster that we're gonna put in, I'll show you. It'll be the one right here. It's a stock cluster out of a Suburban. Um, I'm sure they come in other vehicles too, but um, this one is out of a 90s model Suburban, square body style. The difference between this one and the one that I have, this one has electrical uh, speedometer. So it's gonna work great for my transmission, which I went ahead and used the 4L60E transmission that came with my donor vehicle. So uh, I swapped the whole drive, the transmission, the motor, you know, all that good stuff. Um, if you haven't seen all that, you can you can look back at the other videos. Um, anyhow, uh, I'm going to go over with you uh, what I have learned off of this group, this page. Like I said, you can check uh, the file section out. It has this diagram that I'm going to use. Uh, so that's where I got all of my information from. So I'm not going to take any kind of credit for me knowing this already because, let's face it, uh, I've learned every bit of this from, from where to go. I mean, I didn't really know nothing about none of this kind of stuff. Uh, I've seen some people do the LS swap and I thought that's what I wanted to do. So every bit of my process has either been through this page or a couple other different pages or somebody just messaged me and said, hey man, let me help you out. But anyhow. The diagram and the process that we're going to use today did come from that group. Uh, you should go check them out on Facebook. I'll put a link uh, to the page down in the description of this video. So, without further ado, let me get you over to the workbench and I'm going to give you a before diagram, what it's like on the stock 84. Uh, I believe it's 81 through 87, you know, roughly stock uh, harness plug that's on your cluster. And then I'm going to show you what you need to remove or relocate. In other words, repin. So let's get right to it. Welcome back. All right. This is basically what your stock plug uh, for your dash cluster. This will be behind the dash cluster. This is your stock plug. Um, you can see the jumper wire here. Um, which we'll get into that in just a second. But what it will do is it plugs right into the back of your cluster. Just a snap in, no big deal. So, if you will notice 
right here, if my camera will zoom in, you can see numbers on, on each of the, uh, the wires. There we go. You see one all the way through nine. Then you flip it over and you'll see 10 all the way through 18. Each one of these wires has a purpose. It, you know, it, it functions, it works so. So, here is the stock wire. Let me try to get you zoomed in a little bit here. This is your stock wire and pin out for it. All right. There we go. Like I said, this is, I believe it's 81 through 87. Uh, this is your list. You can pause the video here. Uh, you can write it down. You can download it um, in the file section on this video. It already has it on there. So, anyhow, your first pin will be a light green. This is an unmodified plug. You can see this is for your high beam. It's for a light green, which is right there. Next is for your, like the dash lights, it's gray. That's number two. Number three is this black wire right here. That runs to a ground, you know, so forth and so on. Like I said, you can pause the video, uh, screenshot it, whatever, download it. I would recommend you download the file from the uh, Facebook uh, page. That's in the description. All right. Now we're going to flip over to the other uh, diagram that I'm going to show you. And we'll be right back. Okay. Now, when you have your stock plug and you want to use the cluster that I'm going to use, it's all, you know, it's electric speedometer and, you know, so forth, so on. You're going to need to switch some of these wires around to a different location. Uh, you're also going to need to just remove some of them, either, either cut them out of the way or, you know, unpin them and uh, tape them up to where they don't touch anything. This is the diagram, what you're going to need to move, um, you know, like I said, repin it, uh, remove it or, or whatever. Your number one, you're not going to do anything to it. No change. That means you leave it alone. You're going to move number two to the number nine pin. That's going to be your gray wire. Okay. You'll move a number nine to the number eight spot. It'll be a dark green wire. You'll move the number eight to the number two spot, which is a black wire. I do have the parentheses around each one of these right here, so do not mistake these for a one. Uh, number three, you'll remove it, cut it and tape it off, whatever you want to do. Number four, no change. Number five to number three, it's tan wire. Number six, you'll remove and tape off, it's pink and black. The pink and black usually are your, uh, I believe it's your keyed power source. Uh, number seven, remove and tape off, it's a pink wire. Uh, I skipped, uh, let's see, I believe eight and nine. No, I didn't. They're already up here. But you see the process of what you have to do. What you'll do is you'll go through your whole list. And then when you get down to here, 18, 16, and number five, what you're going to do is you're going to add wires into there. Okay. This is add for your VSS, which is your vehicle speed sensor. Okay, that's your speedometer. You'll add a wire there, and you'll run that to your, my, I'm gonna run it to my LS harness because that's what my speed signal is off of. Uh, you'll add a wire to number 16. This is for your check engine light. Uh, that'll also come off of your harness. You'll add a number five spot, you'll add a, wire here for your battery warning that's you know it'll go to your uh 
your alternator wire. And I'm going to pause the video one more time and I'm going to show you how I have my new plug. All right. This is after I've gotten done removing wires uh, and moving them to different locations. Uh, I took the liberty of labeling each one of my wires. That way I would know what they are because I cut the stop plug out of there to install the, the Intellitronics digital gauges. Uh, inside the cab of my truck, I also, on the stock wires, I have these labeled. That way I know which wire is which. I did that uh, before I decided to go this route. I did it as I was switching over to the digital gauges. 